Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. Thank God for the Word. Yes. I love the Word. Don't yes. you love the Word? Yes. The Word holds our help. It holds our answers, and we honor that Word. Right. We've been taking the last several episodes, and we're just teaching on something so basic but so important to us, yes. and that is this. How are we treating the Word? Yes. In our everyday life, are we giving it first place. Yes. Not only that, are we giving an all out effort mm -hmm. toward the word? Yes. Not a half hearted nod to the word, right. but an all out effort toward the word. Yes. What's that mean? We have our attention on the, what the word has for us. Yes. Amen. Yes. We've been taking uh, something that Jesus said in Mark chapter four, verse 24, and I'm going to read out of the Amplified Classic translation. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus speaking and he made this statement. Be careful what you're hearing. We need to make sure that what we're listening to is fortifying our faith. That's right. Amen. Encouraging our faith. Right. Putting faith in us, not taking faith out of us. Right. And he says this, the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue or power and knowledge that comes back to you. So notice this, he's letting us know what we, the, the degree of, uh, of the word that we're feeding on is the degree of power that's mm -hmm. going to come back to yeah. us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And notice this, it's not up to God as to how much power is flowing toward our need. It's up to us. Yes. It's Amen. up to it's us. Amen. The measure of thought and study we give mm -hmm. to the truth we hear is the measure of power and virtue that comes back to us. Amen. So notice this, anytime you give something toward the word, it always comes back Amen. to you, Amen. right? Amen. My, my, my. Amen. <clears throat> and then we've also made this statement in conjunction with it. How we treat the word will determine how we receive from God Amen. and Amen. what we receive from God. Yes. If we ignore certain benefits, then we won't partake of them. Right. Right. If we give our attention to certain benefits, that's what we'll partake of. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Amen. And uh, no matter what belongs to us in Christ, because we know this all belongs to us in Christ, yeah. uh, but we will only partake of the things that we're interested, only partake of the things that belong to us based on how we treat the word. Amen. Yeah what we're interested in. I don't know about you. I'm interested in healing. I'm interested in prosperity. I'm interested in victory. I'm interested in a flow of peace for my mind. I'm interested. So that means I have to give attention to it. Amen. When we're believing God for a miracle, and this is what we were talking about in the previous episode, is especially if there are serious um, conditions that someone is faced with even life and death situations. Mm -hmm. It matters at those times, especially how we're treating the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we can't let our attention go to anything else but what God says when we need a miracle. Mm -hmm. When we need a miracle, we don't have, we don't have room for doubt. Mm -hmm. We don't have room for compromise. We don't have room for anything except what the word says. So that means we have to be especially disciplined in our thought life to not give the wrong thought a place in us yes. and in our thinking. Right. Amen. Right. When we need a miracle, we don't have time for the unimportant. That's right. That's right. 
We need to be taking as much time of our day as we can to sowing that word in us and releasing that faith that that comes. It's not enough to get faith in. We've got to get faith released. Faith is not, we won't receive because we have faith. We'll we'll receive because we release our faith. So always think of faith coming has to also have not just the intake direction, but the outflow direction. It's got to be coming in and being released, coming in and being released, coming in and being released. So when you need a miracle, we don't have time for the unimportant. I said, we don't have time for the unimportant. Um, I, I, there are certain, certain elements of Dad Hagen's um, healing testimony that I go back to because we find answers for ourselves in it. When Dad Hagen, who was our spiritual father, was 15 years old, um, he wasn't born again. He thought he was because he attended church and he was a member of a church, uh, but he had never been born again. He had never received Jesus into his heart, but he was born with an incurable heart condition. He was born with the entire chest cavity deformed. So inside he was all deformed. That means certain pipes and tubes went to different places than they were supposed to. Um, Also, he had an incurable blood condition. So any one of these things could have meant certain death for him. So at 15 years old, he finds himself completely bedfast. During that time, he began finding in the word. He got born again on the first day he was bedfast. Uh, there's so much to his testimony. We won't have time to turn it, you know, to tell it all today, but just certain aspects I want to bring out. He started feeding on the word for himself and started finding out that healing, divine healing was available. So after uh, 17 months on his deathbed, he was raised up. Not because God just favored him and did something spectacular. It's because Brother Hagen gave an all out effort in the direction of the word. He was interested. Amen. Amen. You know, when we talk about effort, we're not talking about works of earning something. We're talking about being interested enough to lay hold of something, to lay hold of the word. And he gave an all out effort toward the word. And um, during those 17 months that he was bed fast, for part of that time, he was partially paralyzed. And it would take him sometimes 45 minutes to turn a page in the Bible. But he would keep trying to, he'd keep telling his hand, I want to, I want to turn that page. I want to move my hand so I can turn that page. I want to move my hand so I can turn that page. You talk about interested. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. It was a, it was a labor for him. Sure. To turn the page even so he could read the Bible, but he gave an all out effort toward the word. Um, And when the light of the word dawned on his spirit, then it began to do a work in him and he was raised up. But I wanted to bring out one aspect that he talks about that when he was on his deathbed, um, a pastor came to visit him and evidently People that were around Dad Hagen, whether it's family, friends, whoever, I'm not sure, they recognized that he spent most uh, the bulk of his days feeding on the Word. And you know what? When you're bed fast, you got 24 hours a day to feed on the Word, right? <laughs> right? That's a lot of time. That's a that's an all-out effort toward the Word. And so, people who did not understand the place of the Word that it should hold in our lives, they were concerned. They thought there were people who told the doctor, we're concerned that he's going to lose his mind over the Bible. <laughs> um, but you know what? When people don't know, they, they, they will accept wrong thinking like right, that. Right, right. So the doctor came in one of his usual visits and uh, he said to Brother Hagen, as this young man laying on his deathbed, he said, uh, you're here 24 hours a day. You know, what do you do during the day? He said, I pray. I read my Bible. He said, well, do you ever read the funny papers? He says, no. He said, well, why don't you read the funny papers? He said, I don't have time for that. Listen, when you're faced with a serious situation, you don't fill your time with the unimportant. Yeah, that's right. Is it wrong to read the funny papers or comic strips? I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying it matters when you're believing God that you're doing things that are feeding your faith. 
Amen. And so he told him he didn't have time because if you, we're in a life and death situation like he was, or there's much opposing us, we need to make sure that we're giving preference to something that's going to deliver us. Mm -hmm. Funny papers won't deliver you. Reading the comics just won't deliver you. Uh, but basically, they just they they didn't have the understanding of what the word would do. So they were concerned that it was going to take him off course. The Bible sets you on yes, course. Right. Yes, that's right. Amen. 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 So we want to make sure that we don't come up with the argument, I don't have time for the word. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have time for what matters to us. We always have time for what's important to us. Yes. Always. There was a, a precious man named George Mueller. I don't know if you've ever heard of him or read after him. He was alive during the 1800s and he lived in Bristol, England. And... Um, he was directed by God. One of the things that he had as a part of his ministry is he started an orphanage. At the, at the time of his home going, he was housing and believing God by faith, just faith alone in God, feeding and housing, clothing, educating 2,000 orphans wow. at the time of his death. Um, actually, 2,500 orphans. His schedule was full. Don't you think yes. so? <laughs> he was also pastoring. Yes. He was running other aspects of the ministry. His schedule was full, meaning he had a lot of responsibilities that could fill his day. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he said this, I make priority. My time in the word and prayer is my priority. Yes. Meaning right. nothing else in my day yes. is more important than my time in the word wow. and prayer. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. I love also what he said. He said, I don't just read through the Bible. I meditate my way through the Bible. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't just let the chapters and verses wash through my mind like water through a pipe. I want them to land in me. Yes. Yes. I want them to become part of me. So I meditate on the, on, on, through the word, meaning he talked to God. He stopped and he would, if I could say this, soak in certain truths of the word, meditate on them, think deeply into them. He wasn't just trying to get his Bible reading done. He wasn't just trying to check it off his list. He wasn't trying to get his reading done. He was trying to get the word in him. Yes. It's the word in you yes. that yes. makes the difference. Yes. Then you think about someone like Daniel. He was a man um, in the Old Testament that served under three different kings. He was a government, a government man. He was raised up by God um, and served in this government. There were three different administrations he was a part of. Yeah. And each king who came into power felt safe with him. They didn't try to get rid of him. Why? Because Daniel adapted himself to the men that were in leadership. Yeah. He didn't just say, it, it, I, I, can, I only know one way of operating. He adapted himself mm -hmm. to his leaders and he served them well. Now, this man, he is a leading man in government of a nation. You think his schedule was full? Yeah. Yes. Yet he found time to go aside three times a day and pray. What's that mean? Um, the things that are important to us, we make time for. Right. We, don't wait for our, we don't wait for our day to give us time for it. Amen. It shows us the place the word holds in our life and the place God holds in our life, how we spend our day. Yeah. Amen. Um, I love the testimony of a woman by the name of Lillian B. Yeomans. She was a woman, she was a medical doctor. Her practice started in the 1800s. Uh, but through overwork, she had began taking um, drugs just to keep up with her work schedule. She wasn't do it for, doing it for recreation. It was because she was not getting sleep and she was trying to keep functioning. Mm -hmm. So she took drugs and over a short period of time found, realized she's an addict. And um, she, because she was a medical doctor, she knew the difficulty that people faced who became addicts with the kind of drugs she took. She ended up going down to death's door. She came back into right fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. And she went to and, and was in the services of different men of God who believed in healing. Mm -hmm. And different ones uh, ministered to her. And she received help through their ministries. 
but still there were symptoms that she had to deal with. Now you can imagine when uh, she was addicted to the drugs that she was addicted to, she would have, if I could say this, hallucinations and all kinds of things that made the mind unsound. Mm -hmm. She had all kinds of physical things that that had affected. And she was talking about in her writings how she um, came to a point where she had symptoms in her body and she would sit at home and she would go through all the healing passages in the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the gospels that record Jesus's earthly ministry. Mm -hmm. And all she would do all day long was feed on those healing scriptures. She would read through them, feed on them, meditate on them, start over back again. She would do that throughout the day. She did that for several days in a row. And she said, after doing this for several days, she said, I realized one day all my symptoms are gone and I don't even know when they left. Mm -hmm. What happened? She became so occupied with the word that she quit being occupied with her body. She quit being occupied with her need. This is the blessing of giving the word first place. That when we fill up with the word, it flushes out Mm -hmm. the things we don't want in our life, the things that are opposite to the word. So we can see this, that victory comes when the word gains our full attention. How do we know the word has our full attention? When we get full of the word. Amen. 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 Be full of the word. As we feed on the word, God can show us our remedy for our situation. When we're feeding on the word, if there's something we need to adjust or correct or implement or remove from our life, while we're feeding on the word, God can speak to us because we're in the atmosphere of listening to him. And we can hear corrections to make. We can hear adjustments to make. Sometimes the remedy for us is just give the word first place. (laughs) Seriously. It's just that simple. That would remedy so many situations. Um, I would say this to know the remedy of what corrections we may need to make to get on the other side of what we're facing, to get on the other side of that test. I would have to bring this to you. What's God been dealing with you about? Amen. God is dealing with us about something because that's what we need. Yes. Yes. When God starts dealing with us about something, that, that all of a sudden elevates its importance in our life. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Just because he got involved that's made right. it important. Yeah. That's right. Amen. It might not seem like a big thing to you, but if he got involved, yes. now it's elevated in importance. Yes. Amen. When I'm talking about what's God been dealing with you about, I'm not talking about, did you hear a voice? Did you hear him speak something? Sometimes just on the inside of you, you know, you know what? I need to address this. I need to remove this from my life. I need to implement this. I need to do more of this and less of that. That's right. That's right. You don't really sense necessarily God saying something. You just sense his dealings. Um, That's his word to you. What's he dealing with you about? So pay attention to what he's dealing with you about. Because he's he's interested in you laying hold of what he's provided for you. To not address what God is dealing with us about can cost us something. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I remember there was a time God had been dealing with me about something, not just something to, uh, not, not a sin necessarily. I'm not talking about some lifestyle that was wrong. I'm talking about implement something, yes. quit doing such and such. Mm-hmm. And I just had this sense, I need to adjust that in my life. I, I just need to, I need to address that mm-hmm. in my life. Yeah. And I, God had never just blatantly said, address this in your life. Mm-hmm. I just had a knowing. Yeah. I need to address this. Right. One morning I woke up and I heard these words. The window for you to make that correction is closing. Wow. What's that mean? Mm-hmm. Right now it's not an issue. But while it's not an issue, address it. Yes. Right. That's right. 
because there's coming a time it will become an issue. That wasn't God sentencing me to a difficulty or problem. He's letting me know. It, what, what you need to address right now is not a big issue. Mm-hmm. But if you leave it unchecked mm-hmm. and you leave it unchanged, it's going to become an issue. Wow, that's good. That's so good. What a help. No, yes, yes. I said, what yes. a help, what a help, what a help. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now, um, one of the things that is so important to us is that we put the word first. That's what we've been talking about in this series. Putting the word first giving it the highest priority in our life. When some people hit a time of testing, a time of tragedy, maybe a time of, 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 um, opposition, people who have been, if I could say this half hearted Mm -hmm. towards the word and half hearted towards spiritual things, they'll all of a sudden start dealing with themselves. Mm -hmm. They'll start putting the word first. They'll, those who have neglected church attendance will all of a sudden start attending church right? Um, That's good. If we've been neglecting something, we need to implement something. Um, And some will attend church and start seeking God for help. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, the word says you seek him, you'll find him. Amen. Anytime you show up to show God, I'm hungry for your help. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry for what you have for me. God will always meet you. But this is something that has to be watched for. Once people receive their help, then they can easily slip back into half-heartedness because their need is no longer present. Um, It's important that once we've received our help, that we don't back off of that place and become casual and lukewarm. Stay hot. Stay Stay fervent. Keep that word first place. I've seen it in 25 years of pastoring over and over again that when people are faced with a need, they give an all out effort toward the word. And then when that need gets met, they go back to half heartedness. And what happens then the enemy and old habits will come back up and cause them to step away from the light that they walked in. They quit attending church. They quit seeking God. But that's dangerous because what was gained can then be lost. Our victory is not permanent until our spirits are adjusted to the word. Sometimes, if I could say it this way, when people see a little bit of light, they can experience victory. But to hold to that victory, you have to have greater light. You have to know how to resist the devil, stand your ground. If I could say it this way, people will come when they're, when they have not had been giving the word first place, they'll come and they'll put the word first place, but they have a a loose hold, Mm -hmm. a loose hold on the word. And if the hold is loose, if something comes along with opposition, it can easily be dropped. Right, right. When you put the word first place and you receive your answer, keep the word first place because it tightens your hold on the victory that is yours. Then when opposition comes, because it's coming, the devil's going to oppose. He's going to try to steal from us, rob from us. Then he can't take from us that which we've laid hold of because he's trying to rob from you everything you've ever been blessed with. So the place of victory is given all out effort to the word. But then when you've received your answer, keep that same spiritual posture and that same spiritual hunger so that what you've received isn't lost. Amen. Amen. Because I've seen it happen time and time again. When there's no pressure, people relax their faith. And they allow bad habits, so to speak, to come back and distract them from what's most important. Amen. Well, before we close today, I want to take some time and I just want to pray with you. Um, I thank God that his word finds its place in your heart because it will fortify you. It will enrich you. And not only that, then you can spend it to bless others. Amen. So those of you, you're faced with a need. You're faced maybe with a life and death situation. We want to pray with you. I have a studio audience here and we all release our faith with you. Amen. Amen. So you just reach your hand toward that screen you're watching and release your faith with us. Father, I thank you for your word. It's a lamp to our feet. 
Amen. It's a light to our path. It shows us how to walk. Amen. It shows us how to talk. Amen. It shows us your highest and your best for us. Amen. And with our faith, we agree with your word. Yes. And we say, Satan, you take your hands off our life in Jesus' name. Satan, you take your hand off their mind. Yes. You take your hand off their body. You take your hand off their family. Yes. You take your hand off their children, yes. off their business, yes. off their finances yes. in right. Jesus' name. Jesus. We say the word of God is bringing them into God's best and yes. God's highest. So, Father, we pray that the eyes of their spirit would be enlightened, yes. that they would see who they are yes. in Christ what belongs to them because they're in Christ yes. and what they can do because they're in Christ. Right. And right where you're at, just say, I receive my help. I receive, I receive my answer. I receive my healing. I receive my deliverance in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. We believe answers for your life. Yes. I said, we believe for answers for your yes. life. Well, we're able to come to you for one reason today, and that is because of the generosity of Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Copeland Ministries. There are such generous partners yes. that give to Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And with that partnership, Brother Copeland pays for this broadcast and pays for every broadcast of every programmer on this, on this channel. At, to my knowledge, no one else in the world does that. He sets the bar high. <laughs> Brother Copeland has set the bar high. And so I want to say a special thank you to all the partners of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. I'm a partner. Our ministry is a partner. Our church is a partner yes. with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Every part of this ministry, we partner out of the different uh, aspects of our ministry, the different outreaches of our ministry with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. But if this broadcast and the other programmers on this channel are a blessing to you, and you're not already a partner, we ask you pray about becoming a partner because it keeps programs like this coming into your home. Amen. You can go to kcm.org and you can sign up to become a partner there. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. God has provided a way for His children to have ongoing visitations from Him. But many Christians don't recognize these visitations. Your life will be changed as you meditate on the revelations in this book, Visitations from God by Nancy Dufresne. Order your copy now at DufresneMinistries.org. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne inviting you to join us in Murrieta, California at World Harvest Church for our annual Holy Ghost meetings. The dates are January the 5th through the 10th. We're inviting everyone to go to our website at DufresneMinistries.org and register. We look forward to seeing you there. God bless you. Jesus called healing the children's bread. Nancy Dufresne's book, Daily Healing Bread from God's Table, contains daily portions of healing bread for you to feast on and meditate on in your thought life throughout the day. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.